grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Benevolent God, you are the source the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is taken from Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and then he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things.
The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is, a, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me? to be a judge or arbiter over you. And he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of, of possessions. Then he told a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly and he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all of my grains and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ we meet, and in Christ's name I speak. Amen. I have had a wonderful few weeks at the cottage, and yesterday morning I uh, woke up north still on summer vacation. 
and then I came home. <laughs> and while I was putting a few things away upon my return home, I happened upon a book that I read several years ago while also on summer vacation. It is a mystery novel, and I love mystery novels. It's a novel by D.M. Greenwood. The book itself is entitled Every Deadly Sin, and it features an Anglican deacon, Theodora Braithwaite. So, in this novel, in a brief conversation, she is trying to explain Christianity to a policewoman who is herself not in the least a woman of faith. And this is Theodora's definition of faith that I want to share with you today. People are religious if and when they function differently from unreligious people. People are religious if and when they function differently from unreligious people. Now, at first glance, that may sound like a fairly obvious obser observation. But over the years, I've known many people who call themselves religious, who appear to spend their lives living, simply doing whatever they please in life. And their religiousness, or lack thereof, doesn't seem to play in the situation of their lives. So the question is, how do we live? What are the values that form your life and mine? Well, in today's gospel, we encounter a man who is a farmer. He's trying to make some sense of his own life. His land has produced well. In fact, his land has produced so well that he has a storage problem. So he decides to save his money so he can build larger barns and more barns to provide more storage. Now that in and of itself is not a problem. In fact, it makes some sense. But the issue, I think, is the dialogue the man has with himself. And it goes something like this. Ah, oh, what am I gonna do? I have no place, no place to store my crops. I know, I'll pull down my barns and I will buy, build bigger barns and then I will store all of my grain and all of my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. The problem is this emphasis on me and my goods and my barn, and my soul. And our friend the farmer engages with the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. Notice there's no reference to others, no reference to family, no reference to friends. No reference to the wider community. No reference to God. And so it is that what began as a reasonable plan ends up as folly. 
because our friend the farmer appears to believe, well, he believes that wealth is the product of his own control, that his wealth is all based in his possession, and the focus is part of that myopic internal view of himself and how he interacts with the world around him. As Christians, you and I are followers of the way. We are called to shift our energies away from the small, tiny, little, egocentric self and engage in a radical trust with our God. So when our focus moves from being in here to a focus being engaged with others out there, we realize then that all we have indeed does belong to God. And in fact, none of us, none of it really belongs to us, but rather everything, everything, everything is on loan. Whether or not we realize this depends on our wisdom or our foolishness. This parable is known as the parable of the rich and foolish farmer. If we get rich, will we be a rich fool? Or will we be rich toward God? Will we be rich because of our connection with the divine. The following words have been around in cyberspace for some time, and I share them with you today because they remind us of what Jesus said in the gospel appointed for this day. It's all about the ultimate things. At the end of our time, then Jesus won't ask us on that day what kind of car you drive. God will ask how many people you gave a lift to when they didn't have any transportation. God won't ask on that day the square footage of your house, but God will ask how many people you welcomed into your home. God won't ask you about the clothes you had. God will ask you about how many you helped clothe. God won't ask you about your highest salary ever, but God will ask whether you compromised your integrity in order to realize it. God won't ask you what your job title was. God will ask you whether you performed your job to the best of your ability. God won't ask you how many friends you had, but God will ask you how many people you made to be your friends. God won't ask you in what neighborhood you live, but God will ask you how 
you treated and behaved with your neighbors? The question remains, in our life of faith, are we wise or are we foolish? The choice is ours. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God. Let us pray. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. We pray today especially for Charlie, Mike, Magdalena, Johanna, Cordelia, Cody, Daryl, 
Miski, Ted, Bruce, Verna, Kevin, James, Fred, Deborah, Mary, Anise, David, Kumari, Joan, Martha, Bill, Constance Diana, Kathy, Beth, Samuel, Junie, Susan, David, Jill, and Reverend Mark. May they be comforted and strengthened. Let us also remember before you, Holy Spirit, out loud or in our hearts, all those personally known to us. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in life toward you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Merciful God, receive Amen. our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us pray. God, our sustainer, accept all we offer you this day and feed us continually with that bread that satisfies all hunger, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. These then are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. which was given for you. The body of Christ which was given for you. The body of Christ which was given for you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit bless preserve you. Amen. The body of Christ which was given for you. of Christ which was given for you. Amen. The body of Christ which was given for you. Amen. The body of Christ which was given for you. The body of Christ which was given for you.
body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ which was given for you. God bless you. Amen. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ which was given for you. Body of Christ which was given for you, dear. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May God bless you. Let us pray. God of grace, we have shared in the mystery of the body and blood of Christ. May we who have tasted the bread of life live with you forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.